Hi everybody and welcome to our second Advent week for Christmas. Hi JC and Sue and Susan. So it's a really wonderful day, isn't it? I mean, this is the, I can't believe Christmas is just a few weeks away and the end of the year is just three weeks away. And, um, but today we're gonna light our candle of peace. Now I've already got the candle lit from last week, which was our candle of faith and trust. And I hope you all were practicing uh, faith. Faith is huge, especially now in this crazy world. We need to have faith in a power that God's hand is holding us as we go through this breakdown of an old age and give birth to a new age. So we need that faith and trust. But today we're gonna to light the candle of peace and God only knows we need peace too. So my question for you this morning is this, how many times do you give your peace away during the day? Think about that. Think about how many times you choose not to be peaceful because your desire is for something other than peace. I know, that's a good one to think about. And we think that, oh, you know, peace is just, we get peace just because we show up. No, peace is a choice. Peace is a choice that I have to make. And if I don't make the choice for peace, then I'm going to follow fear because it's a habit and it's an addiction. <laughs> so I must choose peace. And do you remember I was telling you that when you know what your desire is, at the end of the day, everything is based on your desire. So if my desire is for peace, if my desire is for love, if my desire is to be in in right relationship with God, then I'm going to see a different world and I'm going to experience different feelings and emotions. I'm gonna, my, my perception of everything is going to be different depending on what my desire is. So as we begin our second week of Advent, I want us all as miracle workers to decide that our desire for peace is greater than anything else okay so with that we're gonna go into a, a quiet moment where we're gonna sink down deep into our body and feel the peace of God that passes all understanding just for a few minutes so if you would like to join with me and go ahead and close your eyes and we have our eyes closed and we are entering into our internal inner self. We're entering into the inner sanctuary of our hearts. So just feel that drop down into your heart and begin by breathing in love and breathing out everything else. Just let go, release the past. <laughs> your suffering is holding on to attack thoughts, which is the past. And so we're breathing in love and we're breathing out the past. And so here we are at our second Advent week of Christmas. And when we open our eyes in just a few moments, we'll light that beautiful candle, the flame of peace. But we are here today to be reminded that our brother Jesus, the great master who walked on this earth a couple thousand years ago, he came as the Prince of Peace. He came to bring us spiritual peace. And you know, peace begins with a right relationship with God. And when we are in right relationship with God, with the universe, with our source, call it what you want, well, that beautiful, wonderful love, that infinite, eternal, everything God continues to fill us as we continue to focus on his strength and trust him. Now I paraphrase that, but that's from Isaiah 26, three. And so we are dropping more deeply into our heart and filling our heart with a deep peace. Can you feel that? Can you get to that place in your heart where you feel, oh, this is really peaceful. 
to give up attack thoughts, to give up all judgments, and to say, you know, my only desire right here and now is for peace. And we breathe that in, breathing in love, breathing in peace, and breathing out everything else. Attack thoughts, guilt, judgment, we let go, we release the world, we lose the world from all we thought it was. And so in the silence of our own heart, just listen to the words and allow them to soothe your soul. I know that there is but one mind. And that mind is the mind of God in which I live and move and have my being. And so do all my brothers and sisters live and move and have their being in this one mind. That is a peaceful statement. Can you feel that? We are all one in the mind of God. And then to breathe in this peace and to breathe out every other thought that doesn't match what you just heard. We are all one in the mind of God. And to quietly say to yourself, I know that there is a divine pattern for my life and for all my brothers and sisters, for all of humanity, there is a divine pattern. And within this pattern, there is infinite harmony and peace. Just feel that. You are the perfect pattern of God. And within that pattern, there is divine harmony and peace. There is unity there is cooperation, there is seeking to understand each other, there's kindness, compassion. Can you feel that within this divine pattern? Harmony and peace, cooperation, kindness and compassion, empathy, cooperation, all things of God are in that divine pattern. Breathing in peace, sinking more deeply into the heart, allowing the beautiful sparkling gems of your soul to come forth. And thinking, I know that the mind of every single person on this planet is one with the mind of God. I know that now. And each of these people, whom are all my brothers and sisters, will in their own unique and beautiful way allow the flow of divine love to come into them and they will share that love with all their brothers and sisters in their own unique and wonderful way. And that's a beautiful thing that brings peace to all minds. And I myself, being one with the mind of God, will be open to receive and allow this beautiful flow of divine love to saturate every cell of my being with love and grace, and I will share that with you. Breathing in the peace of God, sinking even more deeply into the heart, allowing the sparkling gems of your soul to shine forth. I know right here and now that God is good. God is good. And I know that everything that's happening in my life is happening for my highest good. And I have faith 
and I trust in God. I am steadfast for the Lord. And that brings peace into my, to my heart, into my life. That just brings me so much peace. Can you feel that? Oh, I'm just trusting in the Lord. In the Christ I am. And I am free to share my ideas. I am free to share my spirit with all of you. And you are free to share your spirit with me and all your brothers and sisters. For God is good and we are all good when we are in right relationship with God. We all give forth of the goodness that God is and that creates more peace on earth. And I know peace begins with me and all my brothers and sisters are me. So I will be that peace. Salvation of the world depends on me because everyone is me in the Christ mind. Oh, I can breathe and relax into that. That brings me even more peace. I feel a deep peace right here, right now. I feel this peace because the divine mind has created each and every one of us. And that's a beautiful thing. And so we are all bound together in one infinite and perfect unity. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that a beautiful thing? Doesn't that bring more peace into your heart? Knowing that divine mind created you and me and everybody else on this planet and that in truth we are bound together, we are in a love bond because of the Christ in each and every one of us, we are all in the one infinite and beautiful, perfect unity. Oh, you can put a smile on your face and breathe a little easier and sink down a little deeper into the heart of peace. That is so beautiful. And in that peace that I carry in my heart, I let you be you. You don't have to be different in any way, shape, or form for me to love you because we are all born in the one mind of God. And so I love you because you're breathing, because you're alive. And I understand that whatever it is you're facing in your life, whatever challenge and whatever way you may act out because you forgot that you are in the one infinite mind, don't worry, brother. Don't worry, sister. I will remember for you because I love you. You are me as I am you. Oh, you can sink a little more deeply into that one because that brings even a deeper, deeper peace. Because in your heart, in your soul, say to yourself, I know from the Lord God of my being that deep within every single person on this planet, the divine pattern of peace has already been planted in the soul of all of these people, of every single person. The divine pattern of peace is there in all. Oh, you can relax into that. Hallelujah, praise God. Peace is already there. And if I can show up as peace, then I am the salvation of the world. And maybe, just maybe, that person that forgot will remember because of me and my peace. So I'm going to make a declaration. Breathe that in. Dear God, I am making a declaration that everywhere, and in every one, this divine pattern of peace will move into action 
and it will take form in all nations and in all cultures and in all religions, in all people everywhere, so that all of us will live together in peace and harmony and prosperity forever. Oh, you can sink deeply into that because that's what's true when you follow the way of the Prince of Peace. The way of peace is to give up the world, to give up attachments, to give up attack thoughts, to give up judgments, to lose the world from all you thought it was, brings peace, harmony, and prosperity forevermore. And so it is. Just take a few minutes and bask in truth and allow that peace to fill every cell, every particle of your being in preparation for our lighting, the second Advent candle of peace. Let's take a few minutes. And so it is. Together we can say, Amen. Welcome back. Did you feel the peace of God filling every particle of your being with truth? God is peace. And that divine pattern of peace is in every cell of your being. It's in your soul, your heart, your mind. It's in you because you were created in the mind of God, out of the mind of God. And so therefore, as being a divine pattern from the mind of God, it's just, it just stands to reason that you are the embodiment of peace. So if you have your own Advent candle, wreath going, having it in front of you, then together we will light the second candle of peace. It's so beautiful, that light. And maybe what you could do today is to light that candle of peace and stare at it until you get a clear, mm, you get it. When you close your eyes, you can see that flame burning. Then you imagine that that flame is growing and the peaceful, quiet flame of peace, peace, peace that passes all understanding. It grows and it encompasses your entire body in this peace. And then you just sit in it with gratitude in your heart that you are the divine pattern of God. Perfect peace incarnate. That's what you are. That's what I am. And so praise God. There it is, our two candles, faith and peace. Hi, Randy. Good to see you. So, well, you know, we're going to finish our lesson, but before we do that, I just wanted to, hi, Yvette, thank you, peace be to you and all. Yes, absolutely. I want to remind you that Neptune has stationed direct today, and this is a really auspicious time. I mean, it's just... It just coincides with our second advent candle lighting uh, of peace. Neptune is our spiritual planet. And once he stations direct in Pisces, we have a real opportunity with the frequencies of Neptune to sit in that power and connect with our higher self. Really, it's just such a powerful day. And this is just going to carry on for a while. And if you're an astrology student, I'll keep you posted as to when things will shift. But take advantage of Neptune 
uh, going direct in Pisces. The other thing I want to mention is our New Year Retreat, which is coming up in three weeks. It begins on the 30th, and I'm really excited about that. We haven't been together in, what, three years? And so it's going to be so awesome to be with our miracle-minded brothers and sisters for two and a half days. That'll be so nice. And the other thing is, mark your calendars. I'm going to be sending it out, though, this week is we will be having a breathwork session on the winter solstice when our sun enters into Capricorn. Mm, we're getting a little more practical, a little more grounded, a little bit more serious about saying, hey, this is who I want to be for 2023. And so as we do our breathwork session, we will be under the beautiful frequencies of Archangel Gabriel, the divine messenger that brought a message of good news to Mother Mary at this time of year. So hope you'll join us for that. It will be on Zoom only, but I'll, I'll let you know. All right, so let's finish our lesson and then we'll get into uh, the topic of peace. Uh, there's just, I think, two, two pages left to our lesson. So the lesson is 132, I lose the world from all I thought it was. Well, you know what? The problem was you thought the world was real. <laughs> and because you think it's real, you're attached to everything in it and you're just, you know, addicted and having all these issues with all kinds of things because you made this ego, you made the world as an attack on God and Jesus, the divine messenger of peace is saying, you know what? You want peace? Lose the world from all you thought it was. <laughs> It's not really real. I mean, and it doesn't mean you go on and you just be indifferent about your days and say, well, you know, the world's not real, so who cares? No, that, that would just be the ego, uh, you know, talking to you, trying to get you to have an attitude of arrogance. And that's not what we're talking about because everything is about the mind. So I'm going to give up the thoughts, the attack thoughts and my judgmental thoughts and my thoughts that keep me attached to an insane belief system that made the world as an attack on God. Okay, so the master tells us in this lesson, he says, if you are real, the world you see is false. For God's creation is unlike the world in every way. So you could say the world that you made is a world coming from the ego. It's a world of body identification. It is a world of the mistaken identity that you are the self that you think you are, you know, when in fact you are not that at all. Remember, your body is simply a communication device. You are here to show up and have your five senses used to glorify God. And so if you're not glorifying God, well, you're just glorifying the ego. <laughs> That's not a good thing because that won't bring you peace. All right. So then the master says, and as it was his thought, by which you were created. So I am a thought in the mind of God. And as that, I can never be separate. Oh, that brings me peace. So it is your thoughts, which made, made, we could say the world, and must set it free. So you made the world by your thoughts, and by your thoughts, you can set yourself free. If you're thinking, is stinking thinking. It's attack thoughts, judgmental thoughts. You believe that you're separate from God and that you created a God in your own image and blah, blah, blah. We should all know that by now, right? It's all thoughts. So if I change my thought and I get into right relationship with God and I begin working with the Holy Spirit in my right mind in God, then I am going to see a different world. It's all up to me. I lose the world from what I thought it was by changing my mind. All right, so then we can set it free and you may know the thoughts you share with God. So when you let go of attack thoughts, then you really know what's real. Only love is real. Only love is real. Only peace is real. Only abundance is real. If you are experiencing anything but health, abundance, prosperity, peace, joy, happiness, all the words that would represent God, then you are using your mind and making a world of suffering. 
you're making it, you're doing it to yourself. Okay. So, but we need help. We need help to know, well, how am I going to undo it? How, how do I undo it? And Jesus is so amazing. He gives us the answer in every single lesson in the mind training course. So, well, I hate to break it to you, but one of the things that we have to come to terms with is to know that it is not God's responsibility to fix you. God doesn't even know you're broken. You think you're broken. It's your responsibility. If it's to be, it's up to me. I have to first recognize that I am thinking loveless thoughts and that is the reason that I am suffering. So it's my responsibility, not God's responsibility. Because you were created in the mind of God, so God doesn't know anything else. God is all encompassing love. It does not have an opposite. All right. Oh, the master says, release the world. And there's an exclamation mark after that. It's like, hallelujah, praise God. If you could release the world, you would be at peace. He's not talking about anything external, by the way. Not like release your car, release your house, release your bank account. <laughs> None of that. He's not talking about external things. He's talking about the thoughts you think you think outside of love. Release those thoughts. Those are unreal thoughts. They are insane thoughts. Those thoughts that you think you think are the reason why you're sick, the reason why you're sad, the reason why you're depressed, the reason why you're broke. Okay, release the world, release the thoughts. Because the external world is nothing but a mirror of everything you hold in consciousness. You know, our chakras are like little receivers of everything you're taking in. And they hold from, you could say, lifetimes everything that you've ever done. And so the world you see, as we know by now, is simply a reflection of every single thing you hold in consciousness that you may not be aware of. So, the master then says, your real creations wait for this release to give you fatherhood. So, not of illusions, but as God in truth. The father in you is the Christ. And you cannot know that as long as you are entertaining these attack thoughts. When you're entertaining, you know you get on, you get this momentum going, right? You're having a bad day. And instead of stopping and going, I'm doing this to myself by how I think. Like try that. Because this is the week where we want to practice peace. And if you're not peaceful in any situation over the next week, stop and ask yourself, what am I thinking that the Christ in me would not be thinking? The thoughts that I'm thinking right here and now are the reason that I'm feeling the way I'm feeling because my desire is for something other than God. Remember, everything starts with desire. If I desire peace, I'm going to have it. Right? So the master says, you're real creations. Only love is real. Those are real creations. So your real creations wait for this release to give you fatherhood. Only love creates. The ego makes up stuff. I sue you. The ego makes up stuff. The story you're telling is made by the ego. We all have a story. It's a victim story. It's a story of they did. and It's a story of, oh my God, we all have these stories. You made the story up. But your real creations, which are coming from love, they're eternal and infinite. They wait for this release to give you fatherhood. So you are coming from a different place, not of illusions, but as God in truth. God shares his fatherhood with you who are his son, for he makes no distinctions in what is himself and what is still himself. So there's, we'll get to this other part because there's, there's probably a question going on, but the answer's coming in the next uh, paragraph. Okay, so from 
the text, chapter 8, I found this really good paragraph. And it says, the will of the Father and of the Son are one. The will of the Father. God's will for you is health. So, the will for the Father, the will of the Father, which is health, peace, joy, happiness, all things that bring peace, and of the Son are the same. By their extension. So like the sunbeam to the sun, what God thinks is what you think in truth because there's only one mind and you are the perfect pattern in the one mind of God. Their extension is the result of their oneness. I and my Father are one. The extension is the result of their oneness, holding their unity together by extending their joint will. That is so beautiful. So what does, what does that mean? When I know that I'm one with God and I'm coming from, then I'm coming from a different place. I'm in my right mind in God. I have a right relationship with God. And so I'm, I'm extending love. I'm extending truth. I'm being everything that God would, would have me be. And so we recognize each other. I recognize love and love recognizes me. If I'm not doing that, then I'm in attack mode and I'm seeing you as separate from me because I'm identified as a body, as a made up self with all my concepts about me and all my ideas and beliefs. And I think you're over there and you're a weirdo because you're different than me. So if you're doing that, you're not going to be peaceful because you have a story going on about yourself and a story going on about that other person who's really you that you've projected. Okay, but in truth, the unity is, is extended because of God's will and my will. They're a joint will. We both want the same thing. So when you're in your Christ mind, you want what God wants. Peace, happiness, joy, abundance, love, compassion, empathy, all of it. This is perfect creation by the perfectly created. You were created perfect. Can you imagine? If you had no attack thoughts in your mind, you had no judgments whatsoever, and you were just emptied of self, the small self, you were emptied. And every day you would say, God, I am a vessel. Use me. What would you have me do today? Like, seriously, like, you know, those four lines, what would you have me do? Where would you have me go? You know, we say them like that, right? But do you really mean them? <laughs> that's, that's the, the question. Do you really mean use my? life. And then to be in that space of being used by a power that knows exactly what you would need to be happy and joyous and abundant and healthy and all of that, that power knows exactly because it created you divinely perfect, but you're choosing something else. Okay, then the father must give fatherhood to his son because his own fatherhood must be extended outward. You who belong in God have the holy function of extending his fatherhood by placing no limits upon it. That is like, take that paragraph and, and contemplate it. It's really profound. Then Jesus says in the next um, paragraph here, what he creates is not apart from him. So you can't be something that God didn't make. God made you as love. And if you're not coming from that place, then you made up something else because your desire is for something else. We all do things because of a desire, right? Think about that. You want to start a business. You have a desire to start a business. You have a desire to make a website. You have a desire to be in a relationship with someone. And because you have a desire, you will take action on that desire. But if you don't have the desire for peace, if you don't have a desire for love, a desire for, mm, you know, that mm feeling, that you're going to go for everything else but that. And then be mad because you're not peaceful and happy. If it's to be, it's up to me. 
Jesus then says, and nowhere does the Father end, the Son begin as something separate from Him. So there's no difference. What He creates is not apart from Him. And nowhere does the Father end and the Son begin as something separate. You're always one with God. And if you're not in that peaceful place, that abundant place, then you're somewhere else, seemingly. And that somewhere else that you think you're in is a no-thing world <laughs> that offers you nothing. Okay. All right. So then he says, there is no world because it is a thought apart from God and made to separate the Father and the Son. Just think of all the things that you've replaced God with. You've replaced God with an attitude of arrogance. <laughs> you've replaced God with pride. Or you've replaced, you know, just make your list. You've gone for this instead of God. What have you replaced God with? And I say it again, usually what happens when, when men and women, particularly women, get into a relationship with a man, they replace God with a man. And they make that man responsible for their happiness and their everythingness. I mean, seriously, think about p women that you've known over the years. They give up all their friends, they give up their loves, their likes, they give up their soul's yearning to do something with their life or be something. They give up their soul's calling and their soul's prayer. They give it up, give it up. They've replaced God with a man. Or you become a mother and you replace God with your kids. In other words, seek thee first the kingdom of peace and all things shall be added unto you. I'm not saying you shouldn't be a mother. I'm not saying you shouldn't be in relationship. You get what I'm saying, right? You see it all the time. People, you replace God with money. You replace God with food, with drugs, with whatever. You replace the power with something else because your desire for something else is greater than your desire for peace. Just think about how many times a day you choose not peace. <laughs> you, you push peace away so you can be right about your judgments about that girlfriend or that person you met. You replace peace with attack thoughts, gossiping about someone. You replace peace. You give peace away. Okay. There is no world because it is a thought apart from God and made to separate the Father and the Son. So in this world, you get attached to everything and it's a world of separate selves all running around like crazy people. And break away a part of God himself and thus destroy his wholeness. When you fragment, you know, and you see this person is that, and that person is this. In other words, you're identified with bodies, and you don't like those people. They belong to that religion. You don't like that culture. You don't like that race. You don't like that. You don't like that. You have fragmented the one, the Christ in these people. You have fragmented. Your mind is fragmented. You've destroyed God's wholeness. You think you did. Okay. Can a world which comes from this idea be real? Can it be anywhere? This world is a no-thing world. All this world is, is a bundle of thoughts, beliefs, concepts. That's it. And we're told in the beginning of the course, only love is real. Love is not fragmented. Love is not duality. Love is oneness. So, Jesus says, deny these illusions, please. Do you want peace? Deny these illusions, but accept the truth. Deny that you are a shadow 
briefly laid upon a dying world. Deny that. You're not even a shadow. You are the divine pattern of God created in the image and likeness of everything God. You're not even a shadow in truth. What keeps you being that shadow is the belief that you are a body, that you are an ego, that this world is real, and you fight in this world, and you try to make this world, you mold it into something you think will make you happier, and no, it's a dying world. It's already dead. It offers you nothing. Then he says, release your mind, and you will look upon a world released. So, now you're the happy dreamer in the dream. Okay, you get to play in the world. It's still an illusion, but at least it's fun. Because you've given up the dream, the illusions. And you laugh. I think, you know, we've said this a lot. It's the masters, the higher, those that have, you know, transcended the lower body, the Buddhas, the Bodhisattvas, the master teachers, they laugh. Because once you wake up and you really practice, peace and you really want peace more than anything else, you release the world because you've released those attack thoughts in your mind and you really know that it's not real. And when you know something's not real, you're lighthearted, man. <laughs> and you're free to express and to be of good cheer and to be compassionate and helpful and kind. It doesn't mean that when you wake up and release the world, you're like, okay, well, goodbye, big bad world and all the people in it and take a, a, the path of indifference. In fact, it's the opposite. You can go to weddings. I went to a wedding last night. It was so wonderful. Wasn't it nice? We got all dressed up. It was so nice. And all the people, there was like 400 people there. It was so beautiful, so pretty, and everyone was smiling, and it was just so wonderful. So when you wake up as the Christ mind, there's no judgment about anything. Like people say, I'm spiritual, I can't go to a mall. No, you're in judgment because if you, if, if you find yourself in a mall, you put yourself there to shine your light. Wherever you are in this world, you are meant to shine your light, right? So it's really cute though. When we start out on this spiritual path, we have these concepts about what it looks like to be spiritual, <laughs> right? And, and I think it's that saying, you know, before enlightenment, chipe chop wood, carry water, after enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. And when you wake up and you get that it's a dream, you are now fully participating in life. Fully participating in life. You're like, okay, life, whatever you would have me be, wherever you would have me go, guide me. I'm yours because I know that I am here to be a beacon of light in this world of phenomena. That's it. So you can go to a funeral, go to a wedding, go to the mall, go to the Wadong, Go here, go there, wherever you're guided to go, and you're just there to bring your light and to be the beacon. How about that? No judgment. Oh, I'm spiritual. I, I don't do those things. I'm too spiritual for that. <laughs> no, you're full of judgments. <laughs> okay, we have to get rid of those judgments because if we, if we don't, we're not going to be peaceful. And it's really awesome to be around people that are, that have, that really see that it is a dream world and there's no attachments, and they're not perfect people. They're just awake, and they get it, and they can show up and hold space for you and be kind and empathetic and compassionate and loving and clear. They can have a boundary. They're not a doormat. They know how to use their throat chakra. They know how to speak up and show up fully embodying the divine pattern of God because they know that's what they are. That's different. Than, than you showing up saying, no, I don't do weddings or I don't do funerals or I don't do that because I'm spiritual. Well, that's ridiculous, right? Anyway, to each his own. Everybody is at a certain level in their uh, spiritual journey on the rung of the ladder. Everyone's on a different rung. So today, our purpose is to free the world from all the idle thoughts we ever held about it. Okay, so it's like all those stinking thinking thoughts that I have been holding about the world, I'm going to give them all up today. I'm, and when I give all that up, I free the world. Because I am the world. And I am all the people in the world. 
Okay, so all the idle thoughts we ever held about it and about all living things we see upon it. Our purpose is to free the world. Okay. So we're giving up all these attack thoughts. They cannot be here. What cannot be here? <laughs> Those like so-called living things, right? That we believe are here. Because nothing is here. It's all in the mind. It's all happening in the mind. No more can we be here. For we are in the home our Father set for us along with them. All of us are divine patterns in the one mind. All of us. God's Son is one. And we who are as he created us would lose the world this day from every one of our illusions that we may be free and peaceful. Freedom brings peace. How about no attack thoughts in the mind? None. None. Just peace. Wow. Okay, begin the 15 minute periods in which we practice twice today with this. I, who remain as God created me, would lose the world from all I thought it was. For I am real. I am. I am that I am is real because the world is not. The world was made by the attack thoughts in my mind as an attack on God. For I am real because the world is not and I would know my own reality. So when I lose the world from all I thought it was by giving up attack thoughts, I forgive the dream, I let go of all these judgments, I'm going to know my own reality. What is my own reality? I've never left the mind of God. That's, that'll bring peace. Okay. Then merely rest. Alert, but with no strain. And let your mind in quietness be changed. Oh, I want my mind changed. So I'm going to release the world from all I thought it was. All these attack thoughts and all these nonsense thoughts. I'm just going to watch them passing, go, you know, come and go like passing clouds in the sky. And in that quietness, I'm going to be changed and the world will be freed along with me. Oh, that's wonderful. Jesus says in chapter two, the body is merely part of your experience in the physical world. Just part of your experience in the physical world. Its abilities can be, and frequently, are over-evaluated. That body attachment, getting all wrapped up. You get something wrong with your body. You focus and focus and focus and focus on the problem in the body. <laughs> right? And then the master said, however... It is impossible to deny its existence in the world. So he's telling us, yeah, the body is part of your experience, but don't be so overly focused on it by, you know, re-evaluating everything that's going on in your body. He said, don't deny its existence in the world. He said, those who do so are engaging in a particularly unworthy form of denial. You're deciding that this is real, this madness is real, and God is not. You are denying what's true. The body is a moving vehicle by which the Spirit of God lives, moves, and has its being within. And if it has a problem at 2 o'clock today, well... Okay, I'll put a band-aid on it, but I will continue to focus on the Spirit of God that lives and moves and has its being in me as I do my daily exercises to maintain a strong body temple with the focus on the Spirit of God lives, moves, and has its being in me. And the purpose of my body temple is to communicate love, 
to see the beauty in the world of phenomena, to see the sweetness when a baby comes out of the womb and the mother holds it, to hear the birds in the early morning and praise God because birds are chirping and waking you up. And Susan, that picture, I just saw it this morning, that little bird, you know, that was so cute, sewing its little home together. That was such a precious thing. I really, I appreciate it. That was really cute. I loved looking at that. Um, my words then, I'm going to speak truth and, and, you know, give someone a comforting word. Yeah, like, it's different. It's different. If, if the body, whatever happens, okay, deal with it. But I never forget that the Spirit of God lives, moves, and has His being in me. And if I can focus on that, a miraculous healing can occur because it's not real anyway. It became real because you stayed focused on it and not on the spirit of love in you. Okay. All right, today we're going to let our minds be changed. And the master says, you need not realize that healing comes to many brothers far across the world, as well as to the ones you see nearby. So if I'm body identified, I can release the world but re by releasing the thoughts. Absolutely, Randy. It's not about getting rid of your car, your house, that person you don't like. It's all about the thoughts in your mind. Working with the thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Thank you. Healing comes to many brothers far across the world, as well as to the ones you see nearby. As you send out these thoughts to bless the world. I released the world from all I thought it was, and I sit in the quietness and the peace of God that passes all understanding. And as a beacon of light, as a miracle worker, because I am the embodiment of the divine pattern of God, I am helping to save the world. I am the salvation of the world. My thoughts bless this world. But Jesus says, you will sense your own release. Although you may not fully understand as yet that you could never be released alone. You could never be released alone. In other words, you have to forgive your own thoughts and forgive your brothers and sisters. Throughout this day, increase the freedom sent through your ideas to all the world. And say whenever you are tempted, to deny the power of your simple change of mind. So when you're, temp when you're tempted to deny the power of God in you, say, I lose the world from all I thought it was and choose my own reality instead. So I like to, for my own self, I like to visualize when I'm one in the one mind with God, I see it as the flower of life, the divine pattern. And I am sitting within this flower of life. And it is pulsing divine light. And that light contains everything God. That's the Christ, the light. And I'm in it. Okay, and it's beautiful. And peace is emanating from me. Health thoughts are emanating from me. Happiness and joy. I'm radiating all of that from my heart. It's a wonderful thing. I am the divine pattern of God. All right, when I'm not in a good space, and I am catch myself thinking, oh, I see beside me in a circle the flower of life, and I'm not in it. In truth, I've never left it. But you know what I'm saying? As a visual, I now am not in that flower of life like a pulsating everything God pattern. I'm over here beside it. Oh my God, I quickly put on my running shoes and I run right back and get back into that flower of life and sit in that divine pattern. Isn't it beautiful, Yvette? What a visual. And I get back in there and I sit in that pattern. Oh, and then I see my heart. I'm like, yes, yes, my heart is the flower of life. My soul is the flower of life. I see my whole body as a flower of life within the flower of life, and it's absolutely beautiful. So that's a really good visual. This week, when you don't feel peaceful, 
see yourself as sitting beside the flower of life and that you, by your thoughts, have put yourself outside, <coughs> seemingly outside that pattern, that perfect pattern that God is, and say, oh, no, 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 I don't want this, and get back in, get back in. Like, literally visualize yourself getting back in. And you are either standing, you could be at your kitchen sink doing your dishes, you could be in the bathtub having a bath, standing in the shower, you could be washing your dog, you could be doing anything, but you are putting yourself back into that flower of life and you're feeling that pulsing divine pattern back on track like a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. And this is the kind of work we do. It's all done in the mind. It's all done right here. Okay. So, when you are tempted to deny the power of God in you, when you're tempted to deny the power of your own Christ mind, that's what you want to do. I lose the world from all I thought it was. And I set myself and my brothers and sisters free. And that is so beautiful. Okay, so that completes lesson 132. All right, so then... I wanted to talk to you about, coming from chapter 19, the obstacles to peace. Isn't that a good one? Because, I mean, we already got a lot out of that, but Jesus continues on. This is what came to me the other day, and I thought, oh, that's a good one. And in chapter 19 of The Course in Miracles, the Master Jesus talks about these four obstacles to peace. And the first obstacle to peace is your desire <laughs> to get rid of peace by attacking others. Woo! Who have you attacked so far today? <laughs> Who have you attacked so far today? What you've actually done is say, I have another desire. I have a different desire. And my desire is to get rid of peace. <laughs> I don't like peace. It's so unconscious. Can you see that in yourself, in your life? It is so unconscious. The desire to get rid of peace is like a habit. That is why we need to train our minds. And every time you attack somebody, what you're actually saying to the universe, who's going to give you everything you say, is my desire is to get rid of peace. That sounds so crazy, but that's what we're doing. My desire is to get rid of peace. So when we start thinking about things that, you know, make us feel sad or weak or tired or sick, say to yourself, uh-oh, I have a desire right now to get rid of peace. Why do we keep pushing peace away? I have a desire to get rid of peace. Even just like when you go, jeez, I have a desire to get rid of peace right? Or you, whatever it is, you're thinking about someone and you have this thought in your mind about them. Say to yourself, oh, I have a desire to get rid of peace. And remember, desire generates emotions. <laughs> if you have a desire for not peace, then your emotion will be not really good. <laughs> your emotions are going to start to be like, you know, low vibrational. Ugh. And your desire generates these emotions and feelings. Okay? You start activating your beliefs. When you desire something other than peace, you start activating your beliefs about that person or that situation. You start making up a story. Ew. And then as you make up that story, your perception of the world matches the story that you made up. It matches your beliefs all because you, <laughs> you have a desire for something other than peace. So the first obstacle to peace is the desire to get rid of peace by telling a story. What story are you telling about your well-being, health? What story are you telling about aging? That's a good one because many of us are in that category of being 
the wise elder. But we have a story about that. What's your story? That's, <laughs> you've pushed, right? You, you, your desire to get rid of peace has been replaced by a story about aging. And then it starts to generate emotions. I'm getting old. Oh, people aren't going to acknowledge me or even know I exist because I'm getting old. You have a story going on, right? You tell the story. Oh, look at that line. Look at that. Look at my hair. Look at this. Oh, my God. You know, I can't drive right in. I can't see right. Oh, and I heard when you get into your 80s, it's even worse. And, oh, and you got the story going on and on and on and on. You're generating emotions. Oh, why even live? It'd be better to get off the planet. There's somewhere else better than Earth. And you start to generate these emotions that are coming from your desire to get rid of peace. And you don't even know it. And then, oh, you can find your beliefs. I believe that when you hit 60, you're all washed up. I believe that when you get to be 80, you're going to have hip replacement surgery. I believe when you get to be, right, you start to have all these things come up. And then your eyes look out at the world of duality and what you see out here matches your desire to get rid of peace. It's amazing. And that is an obstacle to your peace, the desire to get rid of peace by attacking others and yourself. I'm such a loser. I'll never get ahead in life. I'm already this old. Who's going to listen to what I have to say? And then, can you find that? I know we just make it funny, but it is funny actually <laughs> when you really think about it. It's crazy what we do to ourselves. So the desire to get rid of peace is the first obstacle. Okay, the second obstacle to peace, um, it, it's more about the attack up toward ourself. Hi, Michael. Yeah, we attack ourself all day and long. So the, the first one is a desire to get rid of it. The second one is self-attack, right? So the things you say to yourself, the thoughts you think about yourself, you know, not just, you know, like, ser like really deep, like seriously, what do you really think about yourself in truth? What do you really think about yourself? All these uh, uh, self-attack thoughts, okay? That is a obstacle to your peace because you will be focused on saying nasty things about yourself to yourself and so you can't be peaceful in that. All right. Um, and then the third obstacle is the fear of death because if you attack yourself enough, I mean, think about it. You, you, you're attacking all day long, you attack others, you see others attacking, it's all about attack. Well, the ultimate attack, the ultimate fear, all of that leads to death. The fear of absolute, oh my God, but you're already dead. If you're talking about I don't have and I, I can't do it and I'm not good enough and I'm not worthy, if you keep doing that, those are dead thoughts. So you're already dead. But the ultimate obstacle to peace is the fear of God. The fear of God. Why would you be so afraid of God? Oh my gosh. Because you have a distorted view of your creator. You made God in your own image and likeness. So whatever you think about yourself, that's what you think God is, and, and you beat yourself up and punish yourself, and so you think God's going to do the same thing to you that you're already doing to yourself. And that is an obstacle to peace. Yeah. And you know, when you identify with the body and the ego, you are now a concept. <laughs> you have all these ideas about who you are. It's not really who you are. But you have just projected all your guilt onto the world and all the people in the world, however they're acting or being, are just reflections of, you know, the guilt that you've not healed in your own mind, that you haven't forgiven. Like attack thoughts, judgments, self-condemnations, and all that kind of stuff. So these are the obstacles to guilt. So again, I ask you, are you aware? Are you really aware of how much you don't want to be peaceful. Are you really aware of how much you don't want to be peaceful? That's a really good question. 
okay? Because salvation of the world depends on me. Salvation of the world. And, and, you know, we are here to be the salvation of the world. So are you really, really aware of how much you don't want to be peaceful? Because salvation of the world depends on you. It depends on me. Peace must begin with me, as it says in the Bible. Because I am everyone. Jesus tells us all through the Course. So... I'm trying to think of this morning if where I chose not to be peaceful, right? Where I chose, like, I desired something else other than peace. And the ego gets right in there and says, you idiot. That's the self-attack. Second obstacle to peace. <laughs> Instead of saying, oh, I just identified where I have a desire for something other than peace. I have a desire to be miserable. I have a desire to be, you know, arrogant. I have a desire to be moody. Do you ever throw your moods around? Do you ever, like, this is a real test of your character. No matter what is happening in your space, in your life, in your body, are you able to show up with people and know that the Spirit of God lives, moves, and has its being within you. And from that place, extend that out, no matter what's happening. That's a biggie. It's a huge one. So the next time you're with somebody, you know that saying, like, you have to walk on eggs around that person? They're just spewing out black ink. Because they don't know that the Spirit of God lives, moves, and has their being in them. They don't know that. And if you start being mad that they're spewing black ink, you don't know it either. <laughs> right? So this is a test, guys. Over this next week, because our practice, because the Prince of Peace came to show us the way. So we want to practice peace. So notice when you're not peaceful and notice when you are deciding or you have a desire to push peace away and to be something other than what God created. Just notice that. Notice how you're moody and that you might throw your mood onto someone else that you say you love. And I'm not saying you can't ever have a mood, but wouldn't it be wonderful if all our throat chakras were opened and everybody was just living their truth and being authentic and you were with someone and you weren't feeling well and instead of being all moody and, you know, sitting at lunch, not paying attention to the person, just being like, eh, I don't know. You know, when you do that, if you were able to say, you know what, I'm so glad to be here for lunch. I don't know what's up with me. I'm just not feeling myself. But it has nothing to do with you, and I'm just glad that I'm here. Well, that would be so you would call forth compassion in the person that you're having lunch with or the person that you're walking with instead of being moody and all wrapped up in yourself, right? And that's a whole other topic because all of that's coming from your childhood wounds that you have not released. I released the world from all I thought it was. You are still holding on to judgmental thoughts about your childhood, and you're just carrying it forward like a ball and chain into the, the, the present time and, you know, then projecting it and throwing it onto people. That's, that's nasty. <laughs> that's not nice, right? But it, but it is a practice. So become aware this week of how much you don't want to be peaceful. Okay? And then when you, when you become aware of it, Catch it and ask for the Holy Spirit. Ask for help. Call to Archangel Gabriel. He's a divine messenger that comes blowing his trumpet. He's got messages for you. He's got good news for you. Call to a spiritual guide to help you get back in to your center. Okay? All right. And I took this from Luke in the Bible to uh, 14. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. 
when you are in right relationship with God, you are favored by God. <laughs> because you are God and you recognize that you are, and so all good things come to pass. But when you are outside of that, then you think God has favorites. <laughs> God doesn't have favorites. You decided to leave the flower of life. You did it. God doesn't play favor. All right. So this week, we are going to search our minds for attack thoughts. You know, that certain person that you live with that causes you to have a lot of uh, going on. So search your mind for um, attack thoughts. How about anxiety provoking thoughts? Anxiety is a big one now on the planet. So anxiety provoking thoughts, you want to search your mind for that or situation. Um, or think about personalities in the world that offend you. They could be Joe Biden. <laughs> You know, a Trudeau. It could be someone like that. You know, it could be offending personalities um, or events um, or anything else um, that you are harboring attack thoughts toward. And say to yourself, I can replace these thoughts with peace. I can replace these thoughts with peace. And then Jesus says in the Course in Miracles as well, he says, to me, you want the peace of God. You know, there's a lesson. I want the peace of God. And he says, to say those words is not a big deal. But to mean those words is everything. I mean, really. Above all else, I want the peace of God. Do you really mean it? So he says... I want the peace of God. And these words, uh, to say this, means that when you really serious, when you say these words with sincerity in your heart, then you're willing to give up everything else. You're willing to get back into alignment. To want the peace of God above all else will bring you exactly what you're saying you want. Peace. Okay? You'll be healed. When you say that, you will be healed. All right. <clears throat> then I wanted to read from the manual because there is a section here called, What is the Peace of God? What is the Peace of God? It says, It has been said that there is a kind of peace that is not of this world. I spoke with my older sister today. Oh, congratulations. That's wonderful. That's wonderful, Susan. Yes. So, there's a kind of peace that is not of this world. Have you experienced that peace that is not of this world? It's so wonderful. How is it recognized? How is it found? And being found, how can I retain it? Once I get it, how can I retain it? Jesus says, Let's consider each of these questions separately. For each reflects a different step along the way. Jesus is so cool. I wonder if he was a Taurus. <laughs> step by step by step, right? We have to take steps. Well, he was born in uh, at Christmas, so he's a Capricorn. He's grounded, practical, organized, right? A strategy. He's Taurus, right? He might have Taurus rising, Jamie said. <laughs> but anyway, those are signs, okay? He's a worker, Capricorn. All right. So he says, first, how can the peace of God be recognized? God's peace is recognized at first by just one thing. Oh, that simplifies it. In every way, it is totally unlike all previous experiences. So once you get it, you're going to know that, hey, this is the peace of God. It, it just like passes all understanding. It's something very different. It calls to mind nothing that went before. And it brings with it no past associations. That sounds like the holy instant to me. It sounds like the atonement. It is a new thing entirely. 
There is a contrast, yes, between this thing and all the past. So there is contrast. But strangely, it is not the contrast of true differences. The past just slips away. And in its place is everlasting quiet. Everlasting quiet. No monkey mind. Everlasting quiet. An empty mind. Only that. The contrast first perceived has merely gone. Quiet has reached to cover everything. And it reminds me of, you know, my earlier years in Canada. I lived in, near Ottawa in Kingston and we got a lot of snow. And I used to love it when the snow would fall. And at, at nighttime, I'd look out of my bedroom window and the street lights were lighting up the snow and it was luminous and it was sparkling like little jewels. And it just blanketed everything in my neighborhood. And I actually could feel this quiet peace, like a blanket of snow without a footprint in it, without a dog print in it. It was just quiet and beautiful. Quiet has reached to cover everything. Well, Jesus then says, well, how is this quiet found? I love Jesus. He asks questions to provoke thinking. <laughs> He's not a preacher. He likes to provoke thinking. No one can fail to find it who but seeks out its conditions. So what do you want? If I want peace, okay, I have to seek out its conditions. And Jesus says, well, here's one. God's peace can never come where anger is. You can't be peaceful and angry at the same time. For anger must deny that peace exists. So when you get all angry and you're, you're you know, you've pushed peace away. You've decided you have a desire for anger instead of a desire for peace. Who sees anger as justified in any way or any circumstance? What you're doing is proclaiming that peace is meaningless. You know, one of the most powerful ways of being is that when somebody is not in a good space and they're angry, is for you to just be still. Not be still with like, <laughs> you know, that kind of stillness where you're like, shut up. You're inside judging them. And, you know, right? We can laugh, right, Susan? Because I've been there and that person is all angry and you think you're all holy because you're just quiet. Not that kind of quiet. It is a quiet because there's no attack thoughts in your mind about that person's anger outburst. You're just holding space, holding space. Okay, so you think that peace is meaningless and therefore you must believe that it cannot exist. Angry people, constant anger, what you're saying is peace doesn't exist. And I don't want peace, I'm gonna push it away. I want something else, I wanna be right. I wanna be right, I want to win this argument. I am right and you are wrong. The ego's world is the world of right and wrong, winners, losers. It's duality. And guess what? In this condition, Jesus says peace cannot be found. No. Nope. Therefore, forgiveness is the necessary condition for finding the peace of God. I have to forgive or give up, give forth these attack thoughts in my mind. More than this, given forgiveness there, must be peace. When you forgive, there's, when you forgive, you're just seeing life as it is. Buddha was so great. Just see it as it is. It's not this, it's not that. It's just, it's just there. And it's neutral. I'm giving it meaning. Because I have a desire for anger, I'm generating feelings of attack, and then my beliefs say, you know, 
I need to have a space over here called my space and I'm separate from you. And then my perception, I'll see a distorted world. And then I'm going to be afraid of God because I have a distorted vision or idea of whom I think God is. It's just a mess. All right. For what except attack will lead to war? Look at the world. It's not funny, but really? Just, it's insane. Everybody's angry. And this country's angry at that country, and that country's angry at that country, and that race wants to be this, and that boy wants to be a girl, and that girl wants to be a them, they, and that one wants to be a who knows what, and this and that, and everybody's mad and carrying on and whatever, and it's a mess. Forgiveness is necessary for the condition of peace. And who cares what they want to be, really? If you care, it's because you desire something other than peace. <laughs> so if they want to dress like that, go ahead. It has nothing to do with me. My job is to be peaceful. And if that makes you happy to do that, then good on you. Okay. So what except attack can lead to war? And what but peace is opposite to war? Peace is over here in heaven. War is over here in attack and defense. Here, the initial contrast stands out clear and apparent. Yet, when peace is found, the war is meaningless. When peace is found, the war is meaningless. And it is conflict now that is perceived as non-existent and unreal. Because nothing in this world has meaning. And when you wake up, you, you become the witness. And you become a world server in a different way. Because the content of your mind is peace. How is this peace of God retained once it's found? Jesus is provoking thinking again. Hmm. How can I maintain and retain this peace now that I've got it? He says, returning anger in whatever form will drop the heavy curtain once again. And the belief that peace cannot exist will certainly return. So like tit for tat. No, nope, that's not how you do it. Okay. War is again accepted as the one reality. Now you must once again lay down your sword. Oh, and I just have to interject here because for all our astrologers, Mars is in Gemini. Gemini is communication and Mars is a sword. So your words can become like a arrow. Your words can be like a sword cutting someone to bits. Okay, we don't want to do that. We're going to lay down our sword and we're going to use the positive energy of Mars to take action on behalf of peace. Although you do not recognize that you have picked it up again. So, you know, we keep remembering and forgetting and remembering and forgetting until we remember all the time. But Jesus says, but you will learn as you remember even faintly now what happens, uh, what happiness was yours without it. That you must have taken it again as your defense. Every time you pick up that sword, Every time you choose anger over peace, the contrast will get so strong that you're going to say, forget it. I'm not going there. I just want peace. Stop for a moment now and think of this. Okay, you ready? Is conflict what you want? Or is God's peace the better choice? Which gives you more? A tranquil mind is not a little gift. Would you not rather live than choose to die? Let's look at these questions again and, and answer them to yourself. Like really, really, really. Think of a situation though, because you can just answer this question 
but you have something going on in your life. Maybe you have a conflict with a brother or sister, you know, a person on the planet. There's something, a situation, a circumstance. So call to mind something that's going on in your life that you're like, oh my God, you have no peace. All right? And then Jesus asks the question, is conflict what you want in this situation with this person? Or is God's peace the better choice? And what would give you more in this situation? God's peace or choosing the, the conflict? Which would give you more of what you want? Like, really? He says, a tranquil mind is not a little gift. Because, would you rather not choose to live? Wouldn't you rather live? Then choose to die because when you join with another in an attack, you are choosing death, and that's why you're afraid of death. When you choose to attack a brother, when you choose to attack yourself, which are dead thoughts, you're going to be afraid to die because you think that God's going to do to you what you did to your brother. So a tranquil mind is not... A little gift because it's bringing life everything God has your answer and if there's anything going on in your life that you don't know how to handle it to get resolution actually Archangel Mike uh, Gabrielle is a really good angel to call for that you need resolution in a certain area in your life call to a greater self call to a greater power ask for help because when you choose peace over conflict, you are choosing life over death. You are choosing freedom over bondage. Living is joy, but death can only weep. So just think of a circumstance or an argument or something, some conflict you've had with someone. And you came home and in your righteous anger, your righteousness, you're like, well, I had the right to say that and they did it in it. And then after a while, you know, if you've done this work, the spiritual undoing of a ego thought system, you begin to recognize like, oh, oh, I had a, I played a part in this. And you start to take responsibility for how you got what you got. The result that you found yourself in was because of your thinking and your beliefs and your choosing the conflict over peace and blah, 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 blah. So you are not in a joyous state in your righteousness. You are weeping inside. You feel miserable and sad and you want God to fix it. And God can't fix your conflict because God doesn't even know you're in a conflict because in his world, you never left. Oh dear. You see in death escape from what you made. And so now it's like, well, you know, I'll just die. I'll just get off the planet. I'll just, I'll just cut them out of my life. I'll just run from that. But this you do not see, that you made death. You made death. Attack thoughts, unloving thoughts, thoughts of sickness, thoughts of being broke, thoughts of depression, thoughts of any anti-love thought is a death thought. It's a death wish. It's a death wish. It's not a life-giving thought. It's a death wish. Death cannot be escape because it is not in, because it is not life in which the problem lies. Jesus just says it like it is. He says, life has no opposites. Life is love. Life is all encompassing everything God. It doesn't have an opposite called anger, fear, sickness, death, hatred. It doesn't have an opposite. It is all encompassing life. So death cannot be an escape because it is not life in which the problem lies. Life has no opposite for it is God. Life and death, life, death, heaven, hell, love, fear, light, darkness. Life and death seem to be opposites because you have decided death ends life. 
Forgive the world. And you will understand that everything that God created cannot have an end. I'm identified as the Christ. I am that I am. I am the flower of life. I am the perfect pattern of everything God is right here, right now. It doesn't die. And I'm going to focus on life-giving thoughts. I'm going to think life-giving thoughts. Forgive the world and you will understand that everything that God created cannot have an end. And nothing he did not create is real. God did not create your sickness. So it's not real. God did not create your financial problem. So it's not real. God did not create the nasty situation that you find yourself in because it's not real. There, It's not real. Therefore, it's not real. You made it. You made sickness as a defense against everything life. Sickness is a death urge. Life is the desire to serve God to serve more life and to give more life and more life and more life. Remember the story I saw Sai Baba in my dream and he said to me, he showed me his hands and he said, look at my hands. And in his right hand was the sun and the moon and the stars and the sun on the other hand, uh, the stars, the moon, the earth and the sun. And he said, I am the sun, the moon, the stars. I am basically the universe. You, Deanna, are the sun, the moon, the earth, the stars. Everything God. Everything God. I can go on to create other universes when I am in alignment with life-giving thoughts. When I'm not thinking life-giving thoughts, I'm dead. And they are death thoughts. And they're fear-based thoughts and I will be afraid of God. I will be afraid of heaven. <laughs> okay. In this one, uh, God, oh, where was I here? This is good, okay. In this one sentence is our course explained. In this one sentence is our practicing given. It's one direction. And in this one sentence is the Holy Spirit's whole curriculum specified as it is. And, and this is that sentence. Forgive the world and you will understand that everything that God created cannot have an end and nothing he did not create is real. That's the whole course in a nutshell. So Jesus says in the final paragraph, so what is the peace of God? No more than this. The simple understanding that his will is holy without opposite. Oh, it's all encompassing health, all encompassing prosperity, all encompassing abundance and joy and peace and everything. It has absolutely no opposites. There is no thought that contradicts his will yet can be true. You might have a thought that says, oh yeah, God, well, look at me, I have a uh, polio. Oh, oh, yeah, God, well, look at me. I have a cold. I have COVID. And I went and got tested. It says I have COVID. You're looking to make God wrong, and you're right. There's no thoughts that contradict his will. God didn't create COVID. So it's not real. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah, God creates things that are eternal and infinite. Can you imagine if COVID was infinite? No, it's in your mind. And then you become the embodiment of COVID because your desire is for something other than health. But if you have the experience of COVID, it's not to make God wrong and go, see God, you're wrong, I have COVID. No, it's to say, oh, I wonder where I started thinking attack thoughts. I wonder where I started thinking loveless thoughts that I would then take a bite of this cake called the ego's cake. And in that bite I bit off, it contained COVID or diabetes or the flu or whatever it is you're experiencing. 
the contrast between his will and yours but seem to be reality. So you think that your will is something separate from God. No, God created you, remember? You are an extension of God. You are the perfect pattern of God created in the one mind. And you made up something else that contradicts truth. In truth, there was no conflict, for his will is yours. And that's why we say, I will there be health. Not, I hope I'm better tomorrow. I will there be prosperity and abundance for one and all. I will there be. It's in present time because you are created as the perfect pattern of everything health, as everything grace, as everything abundance and prosperity. You are not created for it next week. You are created for it now. I will there be health. Got it? It's amazing. Not, oh, I'm going to take this COVID medicine and hopefully it helps me to heal next week. I think this what my friend had COVID for nine days. Well, maybe mine will be gone before nine days. Like, no, I will there be health. I will there be. I will, I will, I will. Because God's will and my will are one. He doesn't seek to keep it to himself or for himself. Why would you seek to keep your tiny, frail imaginings apart from him? The will of God is one, and all there is. My will and God's will are one. I am this beautiful flower of life within the flower of life, and we are pulsing health. We are pulsing abundance. We are pulsing prosperity. We are pulsing everything good for the greater good. We are pulsating everything love light. And if I'm not doing that, I made something else up. This is your heritage. This is your heritage to be the pattern, the divine pattern of the one mind. That is your heritage. The universe beyond the sun and the stars and all the thoughts of which you can conceive belongs to you. God's peace is the condition for his will. Ooh. Attain his peace and you remember him. So whenever I'm facing a challenge, if I have an illness, if I have a, a financial crisis, if I have some kind of whatever it is, instead of being reactive, I'm gonna sink deeply into my heart and feel the peace of God that passes all understanding. I'm going to do that first. Because once I attain his peace, if I can conceive, that's like Mother Mary being pregnant. Archangel Gabriel came at the Annunciation and said, Yoo-hoo! I come bearing tight, good, good news, good news of good cheer. You are going to conceive of the Prince of, of Peace. Jesus says, this is your heritage. The universe beyond the sun and the stars. God's peace is the condition to his will, of his will and all the thoughts of which you can conceive. Whole thoughts of I am that now. Conceive of truth now. Be pregnant and full of truth now so that you can birth peace in the world. It's just so beautiful. Attain his peace and you remember him. And now you are a true miracle worker, a beacon of love light, a divine emanation of everything that God is, a perfect flower of life, divine pattern within a greater pattern, never separate from that, here to show up as a beacon of light. How wonderful is that? Make that your Christmas gift to the entire world. And the entire, entire world will benefit so much because you are choosing to hold peace it's wonderful so be pregnant with peace how about that <laughs> yeah that's wonderful i just uncovered attack thoughts situation that was taking me oh yes yes don't you love that when it really hits home and we can really use the lessons um because we are facing a particular mm, something going down in our life Thank you, Sue, for sharing. Yeah, that's beautiful. 
So, well, that concludes our second Advent candle of peace. So now we are practicing, we have faith in God and trust in the divine. And now we're saying, I want the peace of God above all else. And I'm willing to see where I'm pushing peace away. And um, that's what I'm going to go for this week. And so I will see you next Sunday for the lighting of our third Advent candle. And that's going to be awesome. So I wish you all a wonderful week ahead. Don't forget, get into alignment. Neptune's gone direct. <laughs> we can be all channeling our higher self. So go for that. And just know that I love you so much. Appreciate you. Appreciate all the donations. I really do. It helps keep our channel going and all the things going that we need to do. Um, by the way, Jamie's camera this morning shot out a spark. It was divine. It was divine light. Came shooting out of the camera. It did something to the battery. But she came to the rescue with her brilliant technolo technological mind and hooked us up through her phone. So anyway, we're going to go and buy a new battery. So stay in the light and be in peace. Thank you, Yvette. Thank you so much. Million hugs and kisses. Thank you, Randy. Yeah, you too. And I'll see you all in a week. Love you. Bye.